All right, I wanted to um, put together a little short video on a new skill I'm working on, uh, and it's finger weaving. And um, I've been uh, harvesting um, a lot of uh, dog bane uh, this late fall, or throughout the fall, early winter, where I'm at, and uh, been weaving it together using some finger weaving um, after I've twisted the dog bane fibers. And, um, you know, I'm just kind of working on it. The dog mane, you know, the, the cordage that I'm making isn't quite always um, uniform, so there's some little humps here. But for the most part, it, finger weaving cr creates a nice little mesh or a weave that would, um, that, you know, was used and has been used um, by our ancestors for thousands of years to uh, make uh, sashes and belts and uh, burden straps for baskets and cradle boards and uh, as well as just basic fabric for um, creating bags and other items. And I'm sure if you get large, large enough swaths, um, you start to make, uh, you know, rugs and um, clothing, in fact. So I just wanted to uh, share this technique with you. And uh, as you can see, this is kind of small and fine, so um, I, you know, rigged together something that was a little bit more um, visible, vis uh, visibly visible. I wanted to rig together something a little bit more visible um, out of some larger uh, cordage here. And I, um, my understanding is traditionally you would have a wooden dowel um, as your starting loom. Uh, and that would be attached to a tree some sort of way, but here I'm kind of uh, just using some duct tape on a cutting board here um, to lash this down, and um, I've got my strands here that um, I've started the, the weaving pattern. So I'm going to show you uh, briefly what I've learned on uh, finger weaving. To keep it tight so that your, your uh, strap doesn't come undone, I have another piece of cordage here that we're going to we're going to tie um, these together, and all it is this would be a common common weave here. I'm just going to make a a crisscross shape here, and I crisscross on one, and then I crisscross again on the other, and then I reach up and crisscross on the next one. I'm going to reach through, crisscross on the next one, and then crisscross on this one and then crisscross or tie it off and this would be a stop this would be a stopper okay so I'm just going to tie this off and just a regular overhand I don't have enough to actually put a bow into it and I could do this fairly tight but I'm really just trying to do this real as a quick quickie demo all right so we, we, we have this structure here now this is actually fairly easy um, but I'm going to try to explain it uh, as succinctly as possible. All right, to start finger weaving, it's uh, really important to pay attention to the ordinal numbers. At the beginning, and I'm starting with an even number, this is six here, I want to start with my first strand on my right, or left if you're left-handed, and I want to go over the second and the third strands. I want to go underneath the fourth, over the fifth, and underneath the sixth. And then I would cinch up, like so. So now we've eliminated one, so now we have first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And then the sixth one is the one that we just laid over. So using that, this new ordinal configuration it starts to get easier so from now on I'm always going to want to pick up the second strand or at least the strand that's underneath the last strand or the sixth strand that was laid over so to do another weave I grab the second one the third one and then I cinch up after I grab the last one now I only have three 
So I grab the first one from the right or left if you're left-handed, and I lay this back down. And now I start with the second one that's on the bottom because it's on the bottom here. So I grab the second, third, and then this would be the fifth one, which is the one I just laid over, and I cinch up. Then I grab the first one on the right and lay it down. And I have this configuration. Again, I start with the second one, third, this is fourth, I grab the fifth one, cinch up, take the far right one, or left if you're left-handed, and I lay down. Alright, so now you should start seeing the pattern, so it's always the second one over, once I've gotten started. Cinch up, lay this through. Just lay it out so I can, so I can see what I'm grabbing. So, lay this through. So there's kind of, there's a pattern and a rhythm to it. Second, third, fifth. Because I have six. It changes when you have, say, eight. It changes when you have ten. And I grab up. And you do this all the way down. So you can start to see the pattern that we're getting. And I chose these big um, pieces of uh, cotton cordage so that you can see easier how this weave pattern starts to take shape. And because it's so big, it's easier to kind of uh, lay it out and uh, straighten it out and to kind of cinch it up. But this is essentially the pattern that you're going to start creating or the braid or the weave. Okay? When you get to the end of your weaving pattern, okay. then you take your second bit of cordage and you would start to wrap like I did before. There's two ways to do this. The first way to cinch this off is I usually I take the last strand that is laid over and I wrap around and just do a half hitch like that and that seems to hold everything together like so um, to be more elegant <clears throat> you want to take another strand of cordage here and do what we did at the beginning which is I'm a crisscross and then lay this over crisscross and lay this under, excuse me, lay this under, crisscross, lay this under, crisscross, lay this under, crisscross, and then at the very end, this is where I would go ahead and I could tie it, cinch this tightly, and then tie this together, or tie it off rather, like so. And this would more or less kind of hold my my weaving pattern. So again, this is just very basic. It's kind of it's loose, but just to get started, um, this is something I just recently picked up, and uh, I'm going to experiment and play around with it more. So uh, this is just really kind of cool to be able to take uh, natural fibers. and create a band or some cloth or fabric really is what you're essentially doing. And so you could imagine if this was, you know, 20 or 40 or 80 strands, you know, pretty soon you kind of have this whole, you have this wide uh, swath of, of natural fabric um, that could be made into um, clothing, and uh, other useful items, rugs, etc. So just real basic using primitive tools, except, of course, for the duct tape. But um, uh, I think this is pretty neat, pretty cool, and I'll play with it more.